Hi everyone. The other day I was scrolling on Instagram looking at other artists' works and saw an image from the new Windows 11. I looked for the trailer to see that cloth image in motion and damn, that was beautiful. So I decided to try and create something similar with a simple Houdini system. Hope you enjoyed this one. Before we start, consider supporting this channel on Patreon to allow Doxia Studio to keep doing these tutorials. If it is not possible for you right now, don't worry, you can still help Doxy by pressing the subscribe and like button here on YouTube. Believe me, just by pressing those two buttons, the like and the subscribe, will help Doxy Studio to reach out to more people on YouTube. Thank you so much and let's jump into the tutorial. Okay, so I was scrolling on social media, looking for references, and I saw this image of Windows, the new Windows 11, with this cloth sculpture, okay? And I really fell in love with these organic shapes. Pretty cool, I think that's brilliant. And then I went to look for the trailer to see it in action. Let's see if I managed to find it. Try and find it here. I think this is pretty beautiful. And I had to try and create something similar to this one, to this image with uh, Udini. Okay, but like always with the most simple uh, system possible. Okay, so let's try and recreate that. Let's place our geonode, you know, always start with this. Let's call it cloth and let's dive in. And let's see how it begins. We have a bunch of cloth. So let's try and do this with a circle. Okay. And pin the, the middle points and then just add some wind force. So let's try and do that. Let's put a planner patch. Okay, let's put it on the floor. Let's go with circle. Okay, let's increase this parameter because we want always the same, always a circle and not an ellipse. Um, mm -mm, I think that we can use a circle or a ring if you want to have a a blank spot in the middle, you can use that. But let's go with the circle to be simple. Okay. And I like to use planner patch because the topology is made with triangles and it's better for uh, cloth animation. Okay. I think that's pretty cool. And then, like I was saying, let's convert this to cloth. And I want, I think they are pinning the middle uh, points and then just adding turbulence or wind force. So let's do that. Let's, I like to give this a uh, group. Okay. Let's convert these to group points. Let's go with pin points. Pin points. Okay. And instead of picking by hand, let's keep with bonding regions and bonding sphere so here. Now you can see that we are uh, grouping those points. I hope you can see those yellow points. Let's reduce this really small. Point. And let's copy relative because it's here. Okay. So now we have that pinpoints, so we can come here to the cloth and tell them to pin the po those points. Okay, pretty cool. And then let's put a solver and let's see how this behaves. Okay, let's press play. And if everything goes all right, it will fall down. Pretty cool. But what we want, we could just <laughs> flip this like that. But what I want, and from my previous tests, 
Uh, it works better if we have gravity and then a wind force pulling the cloth up. So let's come here, let's put a wind, pop wind, as you can see you can wire pop forces. Okay, pretty simple, and uh, let's increase this to 5, let's see how it works, if 5 is too strong. Okay, 5 is too strong, I want something really much, much more, wow, that looks like a flower, <laughs> that looks cool, that is a nice culture, let's see how it goes now. Okay, so the gravity, as you can see, it's strong, we still, we are still pushing uh, up, no, we're not enough force, but that is something. Okay, so let's push this up a bit. Okay, pretty cool, pretty cool. Now let's add a bit of amplitude. Let's see how it behaves. Oh, well, now we have more noises. We have more of that wiggling. Okay, that is cool. That is cool, right? So now let's try something. Let's come here and decrease this a bit, okay, to have more uh, geometry on our uh, cloth. And because we are using groups and with bonding region instead of base groups, we are still pinning those points. We can decrease this a bit. Okay, a smaller one. And now what we can do, let's go here to the, to the reference. We see that they have a lot of folds, okay? But they are following the same noise. So maybe that can be used with just a cloner. Okay. And instead of putting a, a copy to, and transform, Okay, maybe you could do that, like increase five, push this a bit up. Okay, as you can see, we are pushing up, and then we could uniformly scale these ones. Okay. And then press play. Could see those animating. But one thing that I like to do is uh, to have point groups. I covered this in another tutorial. Uh, point groups for each uh, separate uh, cloth. Because with that li little trick, we can give different colors to every single uh, cloth and even different textures if you want. So instead of using the, norm using the normal copy, okay, I like to use another trick. I like to use a line, okay, because we are just um, copy in vertical, okay. So let's see the, the line, okay, we have the points. So this will be the number of copies that we want. And let's go with copy to points. So as you know, we are copying this cloth into those points. So now, as you can see in this line, we have six points. If I increase this to 10, we will have more. And here on the length, we can uh, adjust the size of those, uh, the size or the distance between each copy. Okay, so let's bring this maybe one, like that. And now we can give uh, point attributes to each point of the line, okay? And then transfer those points into that cloth. So let's do that. Let's put a point triangle. Let's go, where is it? Point triangle. Okay, or if you want to avoid writing vex, let's do this with a pop. Okay, let's avoid writing code. So you can see that we can do a lot of stuff with this because vex builder is writing vex but with graphics. <laughs> so, first thing that I want to do is export this point number to a new point attribute. Okay. So just link this to an, a bind export, okay? And let's call it a point ID, or let's call it cloth ID. And this will be an integer, okay? Because the point number is blue, so it means it is an integer. 
okay? And you can still use the point number or the cloth ID to change the p-scale. And if our points have p-scales, they will change the, the scale of our cloth. Okay, so let's do that. Let's uh, link this to a fit. Okay, let's promote all of them. Uh, let's go create input. So the source mean will be the point num min. Okay, copy this to the label. This one will be the point in Mac, uh, point number max. Okay, so let's do the same. And here will be the P scale mean. Okay, the between one, uh, zero and one. And the other one will be the P scale max. Okay, and we can export this feed to an export, bind export, okay, and call it this scale. So we now are creating two parameters here with this uh, VOP. We are creating the cloth ID, that is just the point number, and the P scale, uh, we are exporting the P scale with this fit. So what we can do is say like this, our uh, lines, our points go between zero and nine, Okay, so let's go between zero. Let's copy this parameter. Let's keep everything procedural. Between here, we should put nine. Why nine and not 10? Because I already explained this. We have 10 points, so the, and you always count from zero. So, and you can see here, we have from zero to nine, okay? Because we have 10, uh, but you always count, uh, start counting by zero, okay? So here, we put a relative, so we will pick that number, okay, the number of points that we have, but we have to do uh, minus one, decrease one, okay? And the p-scale minimum, uh, you will see that if I put a 0 0.5 and one, this number will multiply by the current uh, scale. So let's come here and you will see what I mean. I mean. So as you can see, the first points, uh, the first cloth, with the point minimum, uh, the point ID of zero, will be will have this one zero point five, and the last one with the point number ID uh, with the point number nine will have the normal scale. Okay, very cool. Let me turn off this one. And as you can see, we can change the scale of our cloth. Okay, pretty cool. And that works because with copy two points, we are applying every single attribute that we have from our points, okay? That's pretty cool. And then we can apply the cloth because we have those point groups, okay? Where is it? Uh, mm -mm, point groups here, the pin points. We are pinning those points. And you can play here a bit. Let's decrease maybe this a bit more. Let's leave it one like it was. And the stretch, let's leave it like that. Okay, so we can bend a little bit more the, our cloth. So everything will work now. Let's see how it goes. So we have 10 cloths now. And because that, I'm going to show you one other reason that I like to create that uh, cloth ID because now we can color after the simulation, okay? And I like to give the, the art director um, permission to change colors after the simulation, so you don't need, if you want to change colors, you don't need to run the simulation all over again. So put a color node, okay? Instead of constant on color type, let's go from ramp from attribute, let's pick our cloth ID, where is it? Cloth, cloth ID, and we know that goes from zero to nine, but again, let's change this to keep things procedural. Let's go copy parameter. Here it's relative minus one, like we did previously. Okay, and here let's go quickly and put an infrared so we have a nice rainbow. 
Why do we keep these things procedural? Because now if we, we want, we can change to five and everything will work, okay? And even if we increase to 50, you'll see that it will take a bit more time because we are changing uh, before the simulation. But as you can see, our system will update. So let's go back to 10. And let's uh, shake, let's change this to 90 frames. Let's increase the cache. Of course, this number depends on the RAM that you have on your PC. And let's see how it goes until frame 90. Let me cache everything and be right back. Okay, this was <laughs> taking a bit uh, long, longer than I anticipated. So I decreased the points, okay, to six and increase a bit, uh, decrease the resolution, increase the edge length. Okay, to have a quick look from uh, what we are getting. So that's pretty cool. But I can see that we have one thing flipped. Because at some point you can get those rainbows and see those folds. Okay. But let me go back here and see that we have, uh, we can see much more uh, foldings from this point of view. Okay. So I think some of those shots can be take, taken by this camera side, but that camera position, but that one, the main one, I think we have to flip this. So let me go back. So right now the cloth on in top on the top, What's wrong with me today? My English is so bad. <laughs> the cloth on top is smaller than the bottom one. So let's decrease that. Let's change, uh, reverse that. Let's go with 0 0.7. And here, let's go with 1. Uh, oops, again, wrong with me. 0 0.7. Okay, so right now we have the bottom smaller and the top one uh, bigger, but I can see that that's way too much. Okay, I think that's better. So, see, we have a nice difference. Let's go. Okay, that's cool. Go back. And now, uh, I'm going to cache this. Okay, but uh, I want to file cache. But if you want before, I'm not going to do now because uh, I'm not going to cache with this because it's going to take a bit of more time. But you can do subdivisions, okay? And increase the resolution. Very cool. And uh, we are not going to explore the extra thickness. So let's cache these now. Let's go with cloth cache. And I'm going to change this to 60 or leave it at 90, and let's see if this is faster. So right now I'm going to turn off this one. Okay, so I'm going to bypass, but if you want to cache with, it, with that to have a good resolution, do it. And let's cache this and be right back. Okay, let's see how it goes. Uh, let's go to the file cache, both from disk, and let's see how it goes. Yeah, we, we can't understand much. <laughs> Let's give some colors and maybe I decrease the blend, the band <laughs> way too much. So we have a lot of foldings, but that's cool. That's cool. Okay, and of course, my resolution is not that good. But uh, let's go and I want to show you something why I didn't. Uh, let me bypass this. Okay. So right now we are using Novellum post process. We have more resolution. Okay. And we could do extrude thickness here. Okay. Let's show you. And sometimes our uh, extrude thickness on the post process, they don't copy the points that well, the, comp the points attributes. And sometimes you can't use uh, extra thickness. Now it is working on my, <laughs> on my, uh, the study I did before the tutorial, it was not working. 
So if the extrude thickness is not working with the colors, okay, it's not copying the copy because the colors we need is cloth ID. It's not copy the point attributes. You can do the thickness uh, the old school. So you can come here to extrude, poly extrude, okay, and add the thickness this way. Okay, and of course, output back. Right now, you can see that's way too much. Okay. So we can add uh, extrude, uh, poly extrude after that. So if we have problems, again, if you have problems with the colors and extruding on the volume post process, okay, do the poly extrude after. Okay, that's pretty much it. We can see that it's pretty cool. Let me uh, turn on this. Let's see how this behaves. So we have a nice folding. Okay, right now I can see that uh, we uh, decreased this way too much. So it is folding like silk, as you can see here. Kind of a mess. <laughs> But I think this way, by tweaking some of the band uh, and on this pop wind, you can get uh, a closer look to our uh, reference again. This one, pretty cool, right? I hope you enjoyed this simple tutorial, and as you can see, trying to figure out for yourself to redo someone else's work is a way of learning. So don't be afraid to do that, and don't forget to share with us your results, just tag Doxy Studio on your social network. As always, check our Patreon page and support us to keep doing these Houdini tutorials. Have fun, and see you at the next one.